Hey guys, Joshua here, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Aftershock Aeon 32R. Basically, the Aeon 32R is an all-in-one PC. The closest thing I can think of the top of my head that everyone would know would be something like an iMac. So all the components like your CPU, GPU, power supply are put together on the back of the screen. But don't think for a second that this one performs anything like an iMac. The Aeon can be loaded with up to a 1080 Ti GPU and Intel Core i7-8700K CPU. Even if I dare to go as far, in the time frame that I've been using and testing this machine, to me it is a much more powerful version of an iMac but in Windows form. The irony here is the unit I have here is not the most powerful version, it only has an Intel Core i5-7500 KB Lake CPU, a 1070 Ti GPU and 8GB of RAM with 128GB SSD. The design of the Aeon 32R is the entire screen on the front, while the back is a matte black colour with multiple vent holes for cooling. The stand's footprint is actually relatively small if you consider the fact that this entire machine weighs something like 15 to 20 kg. Okay, I'm very bad at estimating weights in my hands, but that's not the point. The stand holds the entire system very well, but you won't get much adjustability, only the tilt of the screen is adjustable. You're not getting any height or swivel adjustability through the stand. The whole system is put together on the back of this 32-inch curved 144Hz QHD display which is 2560 by 1440 This is all then running off an ITX motherboard so the GPU, CPU, everything is mounted directly to mounts behind the screen and everything is then connected and then you can just turn it on. The nice thing about having an ITX motherboard in this system is that you still have full access to all the ports and you can actually access them from underneath the Aeon so you can plug your keyboard, mouse, headphones all into this but it is a bit hard to access because like I said limited adjustability but yeah it is worthwhile having these there. Another great thing about this is you can actually still access the other DP or HDMI slots on the GPU so you can actually very easily attach a second or even third display to this which is super easy and considering the amount of space you save without needing a desktop tower, this is like amazing. To mitigate the fact that it is a bit hard to access the I.O. on the bottom, there's still another two USB 3.0 ports on the side with a headphone and mic port with a SD card reader. There's also a single USB 2.0 port on the top which I'll get to in a bit why it's in that position. The screen looks really nice, colours are great and because it's 32 inch, it's really nice to watch movies on this or YouTube stuff. There are some built-in speakers and they do sound decent but definitely not great. due to the fact that instead of the sound being fired forwards towards the viewer, it's actually being projected upwards and backwards through the chassis and the results in the sound being very echoey and slightly muffled. To me, one of the most important things for an AIO is whether it can properly cool itself and at either times it manages to maintain at around 38 to 40 degrees Celsius. When just gaming as usual, temperatures actually go up to around 80 degrees Celsius for the GPU while the CPU maintains at a lower temperature. Now, on to some tests. I've been running the CPU and GPU at 100% load for about an hour and these are the temperatures that you will roughly get. So for the CPU, it's about 60 degrees Celsius while for the GPU, it's 82 degrees Celsius. In Cinebench, the OpenGL score is 106.14 FPS while for the CPU score, it's only 590. This is because it's a 4-core, four 4-thread four CPU. So it may not be the best choice for rendering or doing CPU intensive work but you can always upgrade this because this whole thing is basically just very customizable. In TimeSpy, the overall score is 5804 while for the graphics score is 6712 and the CPU score is at 3287. The score is pretty good doing above average because it is better than 59% of all results that people have uploaded to 3 Mark times by. Meanwhile, in PC Mark 10, you're getting 3,556 for the overall score, essentials at 7,499, productivity at 4,761, with digital content creation being at 3,419. In PUBG, with everything at ultra, you'll be getting about 60 to 70 plus FPS, so this is like insanely good performance especially for gaming 
Fan noise is also not very obnoxious because they are not very loud even at high loads and if you have some speakers playing some music or other sounds from your games or whatever, all the fan noise is drowned out. And if you wear headphones, you won't even hear a peep from the fans even when they are spinning at full speed. To show how much attention to detail that they've actually put into this is the USB 2.0 port that I mentioned earlier at the top. It's actually a slot for a removable webcam that they've provided together with the Aeon. Just something I have to mention is that they've actually updated all their CPUs to the Coffee Lake version of the CPUs so you're going to be getting much better CPU performance and scores if you buy the Aeon now. By the way, all the parts in this are upgradable and customizable so when you purchase it you can actually just go into their configuration menu and choose your desired specs or further down the lane with the 1100 series GPUs right around the corner which I hope they support, you can always upgrade to this which to me makes this a very flexible and in a sense a lot better than an iMac which is very limited in upgradability. So because of all this, games run smoothly because you can run like 1080 Ti's inside, even a 1070 Ti is, as you've seen, it's actually pretty good game performance. Overall, my thoughts on the Aeon is that this is a system that is designed for people who like a very clean desk because you can use wireless peripherals with this and you get a completely wireless setup so no wires on your desk whatsoever or for some people who really don't have much space left on the desk or floor for a PC case the thickness of this entire setup is only 21cm so you definitely save a lot of space if you go with an AIO Lastly, if you don't want a curved display, Aftershock does sell a flat version of the 32 inch but that's only a full HD display but if you'd like an ultra wide screen for gaming, there is the Aeon 34 which boasts a 34 inch screen at 3440 by 1440 but that screen is going to only be 60Hz so the decision could be what you want and need so the choice is definitely all in your hands. Let me know what you think about AROs, would you purchase one? Like and subscribe for more tech content, hit the notification bell so you don't miss any uploads and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!